Amen. Amen. This morning I want us to kind of look at some different, something different than what most people are preaching on today. Because around the world, around the states, everybody's all in a panic about the coronavirus. Everybody's worried we're going to die from it. You know, it's the end of times. The coronavirus is here. So let's just put that to the side for a little bit and not worry about the coronavirus. Because if you're here, you're okay. Hey, somebody man. said this morning in Sunday school, I think Brother Sunday, this is number 19. Yeah. So if, I, if, if it's going that way, it's going to live through 18. Yeah. <laughs> it is COVID-19. You know I mean? so the, the first 18, I guess, didn't make it, so we're doing good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a weaker, it's a weak strand. Well, this morning, you know, I got the privilege to hear this message the other day, and it's just been laid on my heart to, to re-preach it. This is not something easy to do. When you just take a message like, you know, Dr. J. Harold Smith preached and then try to re-preach it, but it's, it's a hard message. It was a hard message for me to hear, even harder for me to try to preach it. But I feel that in this time and age, we need to hear this. There are three deadlines. God has three deadlines. The first two are crossed by a lost person. A lost person will commit the first two. But the third is committed by a saved Christian. A born again Christian believer. We're going to go through those today. But we're going to look at how they affect us. The first deadline we're going to look at is blaspheming the Holy Spirit or committing the unpardonable sin. This is committed by a lost person. Blaspheming the Holy Ghost, which is the unpardonable sin. If you would, turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 12, verse 10. If you want to follow along with me up on the screens, because I'm going to jump back and forth on a couple of verses here and a couple of different books. In Luke chapter 12, verse 10, it says, And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. Him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that your message will ring into the hearts of those here and today that are listening to this message across the land, so Father, that are here this morning, that you'll just let this message sink deep into their hearts into our hearts as well Lord that we will change our lives based off this message Lord Lord move me out of the way preach this all powerful message to your people that you see fit dear Father in Jesus name I pray Amen Amen. you may be seated four words 66 books in the Bible no many tell how many thousands of words but there are four words right there that is the most scariest words in the entire Bible. Shall not be forgiven. Four of the most scariest words in the Bible, right there. We think about it. There is a sin that you will not be forgiven of. We don't think that. We think that everything can be forgiven. A lot of things can but we see in Numbers 16, 29 to 32, it says, If these men die the common death of all men, or they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. We're talking about the sons of Korah, though. The Israelites, they came up against Moses during the, during the wilderness. They came up against Moses, and they spoke evil against Moses. Let's see right here. It says, Moses tells them, but if the Lord make a new thing and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that obtain unto them and they go down quick into the pit, then you shall understand that these men 
hath provoked the Lord, and it came to pass, as he had made the end of the speaking of all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And then the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up in their houses and all the men that appertained to Korah and all their goods. They and all that they appertained to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation. When we see this, it says right here, and Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. Think about it. They went up against Moses. They spoke against Moses. They seen this. They seen all the things that was happening in their lives, but they spoke against Moses. They spoke against the man of God. They blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. What is blaspheming? To speak hurtfully. In plain English terms, is to speak hurtfully. All right? Now, <laughs> let's look at some people that could have been saved. We see John Wayne Gracie. Basically, that name sounds familiar. He was a homosexual who enticed young men into his home. Later on, they found some 32 bodies from under his house where he had enticed them and killed him. But if he had asked for forgiveness of his sins, he would have been forgiven. You're like, there's no way a man killed 32 young men should be forgiven. That's according to your and my thoughts. That's our thoughts. It's not God's thoughts. Remember, God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. See, we don't believe that Ted Bundy and all these serial killers, John Wayne Gacy, the child abusers, murderers, all these criminals, we as men think they should go to hell. We believe that there should be a special place in hell just for all these people. 20 year old man could not calm his child down his child was crying couldn't calm it down so he finally found a way to calm it down bashed his skull in he did he found a way to calm it down but if he would ask for forgiveness truly repented of his sins and asked for forgiveness God would have forgave him of that but there is one thing that God said, Thou shalt not be forgiven of. And that is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Well, how do you blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Well, first of all, what part of the body blasphemes the Holy Spirit? The tongue. The mightiest weapon on the face of the earth is the tongue. The tongue is a fire. It is placed among the parts of our body. It pollutes the whole body and it sets a course of fire and it sets and is set on fire by hell. That's in James 3 6. You see, J. Harold Smith, Dr. J. Harold Smith said that the ivory bars of your teeth and your cheeks to hide your tongue. He knew no woman that ever committed this type of sin. Now you gotta think this was back in his day. Though. He knew no woman that ever committed that sin, but he knew of 21 men that committed this sin of blasphemy. And all 21 of them within 24 hours were dead. Within under 24 hours, they were all dead. He goes on to say that nowhere in the Bible did anyone ever live another 24 hours after committing the impartable sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. We just read about that right there in Rome in Numbers. You were talked about the 250 prominent Israelite men that went up against Moses. What happened to them? They died shortly after. You see, here's the few people that we know in modern day. John Lennon, years before his interview with an American magazine, said that Christianity will end and it will disappear. I do not have to argue about that. I am certain 
Jesus was okay, but his subject were too simple. He said, today we are more famous than Jesus. In 1966, John Lennon said that. After saying that, he was shot six times and died. This was John Lennon, famous singer of the Beatles. President of Brazil said that if he got 500,000 votes from his party, not even God can remove him from the presidency. Sure, he got the votes. But later on, he got sick and died before he became inaugurated as president. People would tell you right now, coincidence? Yeah, this is just a coincidence. This isn't true. This is all fiction. This is just something that it looks similar to what, what happened in the Bible. But I'm telling you, you blaspheme against God. You talk about a man of the cloth. You talk about a called man of God. Your days are numbered. Amen. There is no coming back from that. We also see the next that a singer and Brazilian singer says during a show, while smoking his cigarette, he puffed out a smoke in the air and said, God, that's for you. He died at the age of 32 of lung cancer in a horrible manner. Man who built the Titanic, we all know how that ends. Said not even God could sink it. That was his last words before getting on the ship. By a reporter says, how do you feel about the safety of this ship? And he told him, not even God could sink it. We all know how that ends. I don't have to go into detail on that one. Marilyn Monroe was visited by Billy Graham. During a presentation of a show, he asked her, he sent down the preacher, and after hearing what the preacher had to say, she told Brother Billy Graham, I don't need your Jesus. A week later, she was found dead in her apartment. The ex-vocalist for ACDC, one of his songs in 1979 said, Don't stop me. I'm going down, all the way down the highway to hell. On 19th of February, 1980, he was found dead. He had been choked by his own vomit. You see what all of these people have in common. They all died as a result of their sin. They all died blaspheming God. Their last words were blaspheming God. And they all died and went to hell. Every last one of them died and went to hell. You see, Jesus Christ walked this earth, the God-man, full of the Holy Spirit, he said, the one who takes away the sin of the world if you come to church and ascribe as Jesus as a fraud or the message his preachers who proclaim God's word and the holy power of the Holy Spirit to be not of God it will not be forgiven he goes on to say if, if one commits a sin against the Holy Spirit such sin shall not be forgiven if you have committed this sin you will be dead within 24 hours those who fear such a sin have not committed it you see, what's the easiest thing people do today in the churches and don't even realize it? They blaspheme the Holy Spirit. How? By coming against the man of God. You can look around us. In a 20 mile radius, how many churches are in turmoil right now? Because the people in the church are coming against the man of God. I don't care if you agree with him or disagree with him. He's called. You go up against him, you speak ne negative against him, you talk bad about him against him, and you say anything that you do not agree with the word of God, what he's saying, it tells you, it shall not be forgiven. That sin shall not be forgiven. Because a person that can easily go up against the man of God and oppose him and oppose what he's preaching is not a saved person. Remember, the first two deadlines can only be committed by a lost person. Can only be committed by a lost person. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is saying you don't believe in God's work. You don't believe that God could do this. You don't believe in the power of God. That's 
flesh and the Holy Spirit. Can a saved person say they don't believe in the Holy Spirit? If they are true, born again Christian, they cannot say that they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Cannot say that because why? You have to be born in the Spirit. Reborn through the saving grace. So we see that blaspheming the Spirit is the first deadline. I'm telling you, take it serious. Because look around you. It happens more times than we commit. Can we the like to admit? I have a good friend of mine, mentor. This church asked him to leave the church. 17 years been preaching here, and they said it's time for you to leave. Won't give him a reason why. And they come up against the man of God. When a church goes into something like that and they go up against the man of God, their days are numbered. Their time starts now. Next, we move to the next deadline. Sending away your day of grace. Sending away your day of grace. This can be committed by a preacher, a person in the church, Sunday school director, choir member, church, anybody in the church can commit this one that's lost. How do you, how do you say that? How should a preacher be one that's lost? You don't think there's lost preachers out there that think they're saved? That aren't? They are. Send away your day of grace. Proverbs 29 1. He that be often reproved, hardening his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. In Romans 2 it says, But after thy hardness and the impotent heart, treasure up thyself, unto thyself, wrath against the day, and wrath of and revelation of righteousness and judgment of God. Who will render to every man according to his deeds to him or to them? Who by patient continuance and well do is seek for the glory and honor and immortality of eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey the unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. And in Genesis it says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And no man can come to me except by the Father which has sent me, which has sent me to draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Send away your day of grace. These are those people that rationalize that what I'm doing is not against the law. It's not against the law. I'll wait till tomorrow. Next year, I'm not ready just yet to give up my life. I'm not ready to accept Christ. And they say, what I'm doing is not against the law, but whose law are you referring to? Yeah, amen. God's law, which is, you know, God's law requires Christ's blood to cover your sin. Many churches will quickly jump to an argument that we are not under the law. Yes, those in Christ are redeemed from being under the law. But Jesus said, he said this, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You too many are following the crowd, not Christ. We're trusting in church membership, and in some words that are said, but we're not trusting in Christ or God. We're looking at the role. We're looking at the men and the women in the church. We're not looking up. We're not looking at God. We're looking upon ourselves. You see, we think we've got all the time in the world. We think we've got plenty of time left, that we can do this tomorrow. You see, a friend of mine is preaching today on Psalms 46 because of the coronavirus scare. He's preaching on Psalms 46 about how God is ever-present help in time of trouble. It's a great message. Great message. What I'm preaching today that, hey, if you're in a 
a time of fear and you're scared that you're going to die, why put off tomorrow what you can do today? Because he tells you right here, there are three deadlines that God will say, done. Done. He draws that line of sin and says, I'm done with you. You keep putting off and putting off and putting off. And all you got to do is accept him today. Well, if everybody's scared of dying of the coronavirus, then why not secure your afterlife? Because what if you do die from it, or if we don't die from it? We want to die eventually. One day we all will die. God said it right there. 120 years. Have you known anybody to live over 120 years? In modern day? But you see, we're going to die one day. The question is, in Matthew, do you want to hear them three scary, them four scary words? I never knew you. You see, there's a deadline that's sending away the day of grace. It's committed by a lost person because one, a lost person has not accepted Christ. They keep putting it off, putting it off. There's a day when God will give up on you. Jesus intercedes for those who are his, believers, but those who do not follow him will spend eternity in hell. There's a day where that knocking on your heart will no longer be heard. God said, enough. Enough. In Hosea, God said, he from his joint to his idols, let him alone. Let him on. People will live in their sin and God will knock on their heart. Knock on their heart. Finally, he'll just say, you know what? Enough. Have at it. Turn them over to their lifestyle. Let them have their hearts as well. Let them wallow in their sin and die in their sin. Because I've knocked and knocked. And you turned away each time. But you see, there comes a place in one's life, when God will just leave you alone, Jesus, like Jesus said to the people of Nazareth, they could not believe, not, would not, but could not believe. Not that they would not believe, but they could not believe. Why? Because they were blinded by their own stupidity. Now, this can't be the Messiah. This carpenter son cannot be the Messiah. A lost person, an atheist, whatever you want to call them, will such just say, I can't believe that it's of God. I can't believe that. I just can't believe it. That's fine. That's your opinion. But that's your life. Your eternal life you're gambling with. Your life. You see, there's a time... We know not when, and a place we know not where, that marks the destiny of men from glory to despair. There is a line by us unseen which crosses every path, a hidden boundary between God's mercy and his wrath. The question on that one is, are you saved? Or perhaps you'll be answering. Someone must ask you, are you saved? And your answer is, I go to church. I'm a good person. I'm better than most Christians. My father was a preacher. My grandfather was a preacher. I was a deacon in a church. Yes, but none of those are the answer to that question. The question is, are you saved? That is a yes or no answer. Yeah. That is a no, don't give me your life history or your family's history. That is a yes or no answer. If you can't honestly answer that question 100%, yes, I'm saved. Or no, I'm not. Then I beg you today, 
Please, please get in touch with me. Come see me and let's rectify that situation before it is too late. Before it is too late. Lastly, we come to the third deadline that is committed by Christians to sin unto death. There is a deadline where God says enough. And we see in 1 John 5, 16, if anyone sees his brother committing a sin, not leading to death, he shall ask God, ask and God will give him life. To those who commit sins that do not lead to death, there is a sin that leads to death. I do not say one should pray for that. We also see in Amos, I gave you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and lack of bread in all your places, yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. I also withheld the rain from when you were there for three months in harvest. I will send rain to the cities and send no rain on another city. One field would have rain, and the other field, which did not rain, would have withered. So two or three cities would rather wander, would wander to another city to drink water, and would not be satisfied, yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. I struck you with blight and mildew, your many gardens and vineyards, your fig trees and your olive trees, the locusts devoured, yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. And I sent among you a pestilence after the manner of, the, of Egypt. I killed your men with sword and carried away your horses. I made the stench of your camp go unto your nostrils. Yet you did not turn to me, declares the Lord. And I overthrew some of you and God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And you were as a brand plucked out of the burning. Yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus, I will do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. And Ephesians, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. And lastly, it says, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. So that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. You see, there is a time, a deadline, a sin unto death that a believer will commit. You say, well, how is that? What is that? What is the sin unto death? You see, when we step over God's deadlines, there are some holy and horrible things that are set into motion. God signs over you, signs your life over to the devil. Your physical life. He will sign your physical body over to the devil and say, Take him as I see fit, so that his soul will go to heaven. But you see, your death warrant is signed. And that means you will sin and sin and sin as a believer, live with that secret sin. Keep it in that little bitty spot where you don't want to let go of it and hold on to it and don't let go. But never repent of it. Never confess it. Never, ever ask for, redem for repentance from it. And you sit there and live in that sin and God says, okay. Signs your death warrant and turns it over to the devil. Says, take him. Says right there, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. That means Satan will have his way with your fleshly body and you will die a slow and painful death. Not a peaceful one, but a painful one. Dr. J. Harold Smith, in the original message, he goes on to talk about some of the people that he he knew were saved men of God. And he knew them personally. And he sat there and sat there and listened to this man scream in agony. Please, please keep him away from me. And Dr. Smith walked up to him and says, God signed your death warrant. My prayers won't help. 
They will not help. You're going to die. And the devil's going to take your life. Your soul will go to heaven. But the devil's going to take your flesh. The devil's going to kill you. But you say, preacher, I'm saved. I'll go to heaven. Yes. If you accept the Christ as your Savior, you will go to heaven. But without reward. Without reward. Scripture calls it saved as if by fire. Saved as if by fire. Which means you just skirt your way into heaven with no rewards. Because you want to live. You say, I was saved, but I wanted to live in a life of sin. I didn't want to give up that lifestyle, the partying, all the different things in my life. I didn't want to live a life of God. I just wanted to do my own thing. But I was saved. Yes, you were. But the way you die is not a real pleasant way. See, if you know you're, you have sin in your heart, God knows about it. He may be signing your death warrant at this very moment. My question is, does God have a pen in hand? Ready to sign our death warrants? Ready to sign yours? Mine? Whoever's listening? Is God ready to sign that death warrant? In conclusion, we look at, are you ready to do business with God? You're a child of God. Are you ready to become honest with God? Has your conduct, your character, your conversation been what it should be? Are you about to step over one of God's three deadlines? You see, why don't you take a different step, a step down the aisle and come to God who warns us of these deadlines so that we will not cross them? You see, it says, like telling a child not to play in traffic sounds negative, but it is life-saving. And preaching like this sounds negative, but it is life-saving for eternity. You know, every one of us will die. We're all going to die. The question is, what are we doing next? Amen. Because death is only the beginning. It is not the end. It is the beginning. The three deadlines of God. The unpardonable sin ascribing to Satan what is done of God. Sending away your dead grace, God will leave you alone. And sending unto death the sin of a believer who will die prematurely. Where are you at today in God's house? 